Welcome back to another issue of Bingo Topics. We're going to cover a myriad of things connected with the Philadelphia Eagles. Here today, some sad news, but Hassan Reddick is out the door. He has jetted the building. No pun. Actually, no pun intended. And all the way to a mock draft that looks at that looks at us making an interesting pick in the first round that a lot of fans will not like, but actually will pay dividends. What's up, it's your boy Centron. Coming back at you with another analysis video in the kid you not ask for name. Hassan Reddick trade. It is real, folks. Eagles deal pass rusher to the Jets for less than you think. And, you know, when you get, you step outside of your feelings for a second, it made too much sense for the Eagles to make this move. A player they obviously didn't intend on bringing back past this season. He's 29, about to begin his 30-year-old season. And the Eagles were never going to extend a player who they see on the downward trajectory. And he is in NFL years. And uh, the, their last chance at getting some draft capital or some compensation of sorts, you know, with no promises being made as far as the compens uh, compensatory formula next year, they wanted to ensure that they got something for Sean Reddick. And yeah, it's two years down the road, a third round pick, a conditional one that can be upgraded to a, a second round pick. We'll get to um, that, those, the inner workings of that in a second. But they wanted to make sure that, you know, they were gonna have a happy player. And he wasn't going to be that here in the building here in Philly. He wanted more money. And the Jets, obviously, not going to tear up his contract. But they're going to probably most likely extend him. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense for them to make this trade and for it to be a one-year rental with that amount of um, investment into it. So um, it, it very well could be. And he's happy playing elsewhere. But the Eagles knew that they weren't going to pay him. And they wanted to get him out of the building. And rather than having a disgruntled player who might hold out and be a distraction to the team. Now, I'm not saying that he would promise to do that, but that could have been on the table. And, um, you know, I thought they could have just given him a little salary bump for this year and then let him ride it out, but he still might have been disgruntled or he might not have been willing to take that, consider what's on the table. And, and essentially, it's a uh, non, could be, a, could have been in a, being a non guaranteed franchise ta tag type of deal. And, um, I don't know. It, it's sad. And the production, you know, obviously is still there. He's had in four seasons with three different teams, the Eagles being, you know, um, the two team, I mean, the team that he's played two for in consecutive years, as well as the, uh, the Arizona Cardinals and the Panthers before that, 10 plus sacks, the first player ever to do that. Um, and he had a drop off last season, but a lot of our players did. So you look at the scheme, it was the scheme, it was the environment. Versus it being the player having a drop off, um, it's not Reddick, man. He can still get after the, the, the quarterback. You know, high clip rate, play the edge even at his size, which is for me tremendous. You need your play, players to do that. Can Bryce Huff do that on a full time deal, or more? You know, then the, he's gonna get more than fifty one percent of the snaps that he saw. I think the high maybe over the past two seasons. We shall see. But it's not Reddick out of here for a conditional third round so it could be upgraded to a second if he reaches i think around 64 to 67 percent of the snaps um there in new york as well as get 10 sacks because both of those plateaus have to be reached breach i should say um i don't know if he can do it man to be honest because they have a high rotation there with will mcdonald um guys like jermaine johnson it's always jermaine so I don't know if he'll be able to see that. I don't know if he slots in as a starter there immediately, but Eagles just wanted to get something for him. And, um, you know, obviously wasn't gonna happen here, but he's not too far. They did him a favor. Um, they, they might've let him select, you know, from a group or just a match with the Jets. They lost out on um, the Jadavian Clowney, um, making a deal with him. So they wanted to bring in someone to make sure they have, you know, the right amount of star par power for that, you know, pass rush there. Um, but where do we go with this? You know, we lose a, you know, a key front front man, leader there. There could be some in house candidates. We'll get to that in a short, but I'll keep it short here in saying that, man, um, it's been real. Um, having him here, he's been a game wrecker. And yes, you could say some of his, um, no, you can direct, uh, directly say that some of his sacks didn't come against top end talent. And, you know, he ate up you know playing against running backs tight ends and the likes you know as you can see what he did to rock Purdy, but um it's still gonna hurt not having Haas here man he's a dog he's a guy that gives his everything and he loved playing you know in his hometown 
uh, Camden, New Jersey native. But, you know, this time has come and we will see how we'll be able to replace that. But hopefully it works out, man, because like that also, I forgot, sorry, I forgot to mention this, but the cap relief it gave us, they're paying $14 million of his salary, I think 14 or 15. And the roster bonus is the only thing we're on the hook for. So that's what they moved it around for. I mistakenly thought that it might've been, you know, to keep him around, but maybe it gave him that dual flexibility. But anyways, officially he's out of here, out of the building. We can salute to your boy Hassan. And I hope he does well. And I, we don't face him. It would be in Super Bowl, I think, in within the next two years. But we shall see. But hey, man, we knew it was on. The, it was always on the table. Just you know, the trigger hadn't been pulled, and now it has. On that note, are the Eagles' 2024 offseason moves a recipe for Dream Team number two? So, infamously, the 2011 Dream Team was Namdi As Asamoah, um, Dominic Rogers, Cromartie. Uh, Vince Young, amongst other players who came here. And we thought that, you know, we, uh, Vince Young famously doomed us when he said, you know, we're the dream team, dream team. They ad nauseum replayed that. Sh and they should have because, you know, it's a dumb thing to say, just thinking we're going to collect, you know, all stars and then ball out. But those guys have to play in conjunction. Nam didn't validate that contract, a huge one we gave him. Dominic was actually, you know, pretty good, but he was miscast as a slot. Then we had, um, Asante Samuel uh, on the other side. So, you know, it just you can't just aggregate talent and hopefully it works out. This isn't mad. The ratings don't mean shit. They gotta actually go out there and back it up. But um let's look at all the guys that we brought in and them them uh the reasons that they think that they're gonna be bust and let's try and shoot them down because this is not just us um bringing in the aggregate of talent and saying, hey, plug and play. No. Um Barkley. Even if he's not the special back that, you know, we paid him to be, and he's just okay, there's an out for the contract, I think, after the second year. Might be after the first year because we're giving him a lot of money up front. Um, that being said, we, you know, he has all these guys, I'm going to hit on a, on a common theme. We don't need them to be the highlight. They can just be a cog in the machine, and they can just shine that way. So, Barkley, he has Devonta, AJ. Dallas Goddard. He's not the key guy. So even if he just gives us four yards of carry and gives us, you know, some quality catches out the backfield and pass blocks, that would be enough for him to validate con the contract. Maybe not by outside pundit standards, but for, for ours? Yeah, hell yeah. Huff. Yes, we don't know what he's going to give us and run defense definitively. But the man can rush the passer. Had one less sack than Haas on, I think 150 odd or something, 51 odd um, less snaps. So he can, um, he can, I mean, he's proven with his pass rush rate, win rate, I think it was 21.4, but somewhere in between 21 and 22% was number three last year, despite the number of snaps he played. So he can do what he does on a limited basis. An uptick would project him maybe being less effective, but again, he's in a platoon. He's not solo. He's not being counted on to be the star, even though he's being paid like one. You know, technically. Garner Johnson. He um, is being set up to to be a key cog, being able to play in the slot um, and, you know, start at safety, free safety for us. Um, but still, him playing his position will allow Dallas Reed Blankenship to play the lower half of the field. So those guys work in tandem. Again, he's not alone in this. He's not being kind of on solo dolo to do the whole damn thing. It's still, you know, aggregate of defensive backs. It's four guys, five really, with, we include the nickel, and then the big dime uh, package. But guys coming in in the play, in those positions, they're playing, they're, you know, covering, you know, a third of the field, a fourth of the field, you know, this section, a half, you know, with the safeties playing in the back half. But they're playing in tandem. And I believe he'll be a great partner for Reed Blankenship. Pause. Uh, Devin White. With Nicobe Dean, I think he's going to be just free to farm the land in behind, you know, in behind him. And he has great speed to be able to do so. Define the role for him. And I think he can turn in a Pro Bowl-esque season. Zach Bond. Um, depth player, but I think he can give us a lot off the edge. Andrew Van Ginkle. As the top villain pointed out excellently, they were teammates. And... He was good at getting after, dropping. He had a nice pick at Wisconsin. I don't know what year, but, you, you know, dropping in the coverage from the edge position. 
I think he can, uh, he's going to surprise some people this year. And shout out to Top Billing for, uh, you know, putting us on notice on that. And Pickett, he just brought in to be the backup. But people underrate his great turnover rate. He didn't do a lot by way of touchdowns. He's not going to wow you. But that was with the, the, um, the shoddy offense in design. And, you know, they don't have the best playmaker. They don't have the play, they don't have, don't have the playmakers we have here in Philly. And you put him in here in this offense, he should be able to more than break even. And then he can hand it off to a guy like, you know, Barkley. Doesn't have to do all the heavy lifting. That's the position you put him here and here in Philly. So these guys aren't looked at to be, they're not superstars. Even Bryce Huff, even though he's been paid like, you know, similar to the one. But them being in the system with, you know, the, the coaches know how, to, know how to use them and the uh, complement of players they're around, they should be able to thrive. All right, Eagles OTAs and practice schedule includes first mandatory minicamp in several years. So we had gotten rid of this thing. Uh, it was going to take place this year from June 4th to June 6th. And because of COVID, um, it wiped out in uh, 2021. And in the past two years, we were one of two teams to ex you know, wholesale. But with, you know, taking advantage of, you know, the practice time that they give you, it's already limited. It's been cutting out so, many, so much over the recent, you know, past 20 years. And we're going to reduce that even more with something that we're able to take advantage of and we're just going to cut it out. You know, um, reevaluating a lot of processes, how we do things, how we evaluate things, how we assess things. Just said the same word, but like it makes sense to just go out there and do it. You have the ability to do it. Don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. Take a, you know a good quality look at it. Why, why break what doesn't need fixing? You know, and it's something that you know it's, it's a short stay. Um, but I think, you know, I don't know if that's, I fe see, I forgot. Is it specifically for rookies? But we can, time well spent um, with players, getting to know each other, just getting out some finer details. Or do Just make it a specialty. You can even have, like, you know, just working on certain drills. Just letting people know this is where, you know, the plateau, the level that we're trying to breach. And this is where we're setting the standard. Just simple as that, you know. It could be off the field stuff. It could be whatever you want. But make use of that time because they're allotting it to you. All right, the Eagles, the six logical first round uh, trade teams should make to benefit all parties involved. So I think we're gonna look at one here, but it would be a trade with the Vikings. So we would get the 11th overall pick and have to give up our 50th pick, but that would be a huge trade up. I don't see, unless Howie's really desperate for, not desperate, I should say, but he he's, feels a strong itch to grab a player that he feels like is not gonna be available or a group of guys that are gonna be in that slotting. I can see him making this move, but definitely not for no damn savior worthy. That's way too high. For Tyron Arnold or Quinion Mitchell, yeah, I would love to get Mitchell because he's just a guy I think has the potential to be, have the impact of a, of a sauce gardener. I see that, but um, I would only see it for you know a certain uh, number of guys. And that, that those are guys I could you know maybe count on one hand. But how hard it would be, I would see us being like, in the 15, 16 range, more so being apt to do that. But with those teams, we willing to part with those and um, those picks because they have to find a trade partner and, you know, who could be available in the area. And it all depends on how the draft is falling out because there's going to be some curveballs and, you know, throw some teams off, um, depreciate value of other players and then just drop other players that um, aren't, are going to be, you know, passed over and, they're going to be right for the picking. And then because of that, other you know players are going to drop. So it becomes a, a great value type deal in a Walmart. So I'm interested to see how you know it's going to play out. But we still have a month to go for this thing. So lots of rumors are going to be swirling. Teams are going to leak stuff on players to try and devalue them to try and get lower their value and see if they can get their hands on them. Dirty play, but hey, it happens every fucking year. All right, the Eagles, last we're going to look at here, the mock draft. I think this is Charles Davis, 2.0 for him. And who do we have the Eagles here selecting? J.C. Latham. And I know Eagles fans would hate this pick royally. That being said, man, it would be a great pick because 
he has the flexibility to start out at guard for us and um, either give us depth or give us a starter there with a huge body, um, highly talented player coming out of there from Alabama. Not too old, too. He's a junior, so he came out as early as he could and train him up, slot him in there in the future to take over for Lane Johnson whenever he hangs up the, the cleats. So that would be, be great for us. Um, but take, take care of two problems, a future problem and an immediate one. And then we would let Cam Jurgens, you know, slot there to center, have a um, backup swing, potentially swing inside, but probably tackle with Steen and then um, let Matt Hennessy be the swing guy on the in interior. So that would give us great depth. Um, and then bring, bring back the guy like Andre Dillard, just for extra depth. That's just me um, buttering some extra bread, but eh, it is what it is. But anyways, we're gonna get up, up out of here on that note. But you're not even watching, no, I'm watching, uh, well, I'm making this video from hotels, but it's any circumstances, you got to watch the kids today, but not my kids. But anyways, like I said, we're gonna chunk the deuces, but as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's motherfucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.